back to the video so this is a beginner's guide to options trading if you guys are new to like this options thing you should probably watch the whole video this is like an updated version just telling you guys what you guys should do for buying calls buying puts what you should know where do these calls and puts originate from so definitely you know listen to everything in this video watch it till the end you will definitely learn a lot and by the way long story short after you watch this video, you should probably make your first options trade. I know it's a little bit difficult to pull the trigger on the first options trade. It's a little bit risky, but the best way to learn options isn't just watching a video, but to actually get hands dirty into the options trade and try to use real money instead of paper trading. Because when you use real money, you get to experience the emotions and also the huge roller coaster of feelings. This is the whole thing about options. In my opinion, it's 50% psychological and 50% skill. So if you look at options, for example, SPY, before you even get started, make sure the volume is high enough. If you pick some really weird pharmaceutical stock, the options are gonna be absolutely crap. Make sure your volume is above 10 or 15 million before you actually pick the share to play options. Good option plays include the blue chip stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Google, or like the ETFs like SPY, QQQ, and maybe even TNA, which is my favorite. So let's go to the options chain right here. Make sure you have options enabled on Robinhood. So first things first is once you get to the options chain, you could either buy a call, which means you're betting the stock goes up, and you could buy a put where you're betting the stock goes down. So the thing about this is you also have the expiration date right beside it. The expiration date, in my opinion, is the most important aspect of it. Today is July 9th. You could get an expiration date that expires the next day, but it's very, very dangerous because you literally are gambling. Let's say you buy this call right here and this option expires tomorrow. You're pretty much betting that the stock goes up tomorrow and if tomorrow it doesn't go up or if it stays flat, you're gonna be losing a lot of money. Look at these options today. These are calls, but today SPY dipped negative 0.88%, negative 61%. Negative 67%, negative 66, 68, 69%. Meaning, if you put $100 in, you're only left with about 30 bucks. This is why I highly don't recommend options that expire super early. Always pick things that are about two or three weeks out. So, July 24th is a really good one. You would clearly see, even if the option goes the wrong direction, today the option, the stock, it went down. The calls, they lost money, but you can see these only lost negative 24, negative 25%. Negative 25% is way better than negative 68%. You get the idea. So if you click this, you're essentially betting that the market goes up in a general direction. If you're betting the market goes down, you could buy a puts, click this, and you should be betting that the market goes down. Now, just a word of reminder about the options chain. When you click a call the next day, if the stock goes down or the stock opens up flat, you lose money on the call. If you buy a put and tomorrow the stock goes up or the stock is flat, you lose money as well. And you should always check the implied volatility when you buy any option. And how do you check implied volatility? Click on any option and you click again. You can see right here, you've got the Greeks and you got the open interest, the bid, the ask price, the volume for this option, and then you got implied volatility. The lower the implied volatility, the better it is, meaning small movements in the overall stock will actually get you gains for your option. If you check out really crazy companies like, for example, Genius Brands, if you go to the Ganus options, and for example, let's just pick a pretty healthy expiration date, let's click $3. If you click again, you can see the implied volatility is 274%. In my opinion, any sort of implied volatility over 100% is very risky to buy because you need huge movements in the overall stock for it to actually grow. You can see Genius Brands is up 0.43% today. It's positive, but this option lost negative 21%. You're probably scratching your heads. The overall stock, it went up. Shouldn't the calls go up in value as well? Yes, but since implied volatility is so high, you need a much higher movement than 0.2 or 0.5%. You need about like a 5 or 10% movement to actually make money on this call. So if you see implied volatility that's above 100 or 150%, it's best if you don't touch it. It's really bad. And when you're playing earnings, implied volatility is the highest. And I really don't recommend playing earnings because it could actually kill your account. A lot of people, they buy calls, they buy puts, and they both lose because the IV is just way too high. So let's pick something like you know, PowerShares Triple Q just to freshen things up. Now, keep in mind that expiration dates 
SBY is the only stock on the New York Stock Exchange that have about 12 expiration dates a month. Generally speaking, stocks have about four expiration dates every month or one expiration date every month. So let's pick something like QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ. So this is mostly tech companies. It's pretty simple. So if you click this, you're pretty much clicking a call and you're betting the market goes up. Let's pick a safe expiration date like July 24th. You click on this, you click continue and you click one, and then you gotta input your price. Now, you can clearly see the limit price. This is the Robinhood price, the midpoint, $4.64. Now, the thing is, if you want to get a fill right away, you should probably increase your price a little bit higher. For example, $4.65. If you want to you know, get a harder fill, but a cheaper price, you could lower it below the midpoint. Now, if you want to get your option immediately, it's best if you if it says like $4.59 or 60 cents, make it like $4.62. You should be able to get this option right away. So yeah, this is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And same thing with the puts, you buy puts, you're essentially betting that the market goes down. So you may be wondering, where do these calls and puts come from? In fact, the really crazy thing about the options market is the calls and puts that you buy generally comes from the people that sell them. I personally love selling puts to other people and a lot of people do the same thing. Major banks, hedge funds, they love selling calls and love selling puts to individuals. And the thing about selling calls and selling puts is you need a lot of capital. And if you want to buy options, you don't need a lot of capital. So let's click sell puts. So pretty much I could sell you this put and someone else will pay me $535 for it in simple terms. I could also sell a call, for example, this one, and someone will pay me $495 to sell them this item right here, the 262 strike price. It's that simple. I'll get into that in a whole different video. Those are called cash secure puts and cover calls, but we're not covering this in this video. So the thing about options is, just a quick little pro tip. If you buy those options right here and the next day you get gains, sell the option. Like seriously, a lot of people, they diamond hands their way all the way to expiration date, which is the worst thing you could do. The thing about options is most people don't wait to the expiration date. Do you see this break even price? Don't even pay attention to that. If today is July 9th and this option expires on July 24th, if the next day you turn $468 to $500 or $600, sell your option. You don't have to hold it to expiration date. You could sell it anytime you want. Any time you feel like. If you want to sell it today, you can sell it today. If you want to sell it next week, you can sell it next week. You don't have to wait till expiration date. In fact, I highly don't recommend waiting for the expiration date because one, a lot of things could happen in the middle. The stock could drop a lot, go up, drop a lot, stay flat, you lose your money. And if you make money, sell the option, take your profits, and you run home. Another word of advice when you're playing options is when you get gains, for example, if you buy this call for about $450, you make about $1,000 from it, take half of it out of your Robinhood, buy something nice with it or put it in your bank account. Take half of it and buy regular shares. Do not re-yellow all of your gains back into the options market because one bad play could absolutely destroy your whole portfolio. And you and you honestly do not want that. Like I've seen people turn $1,000 to $5,000 and $5,000 became like $500 because of just one bad play. It's easier to lose money than to win money. And just for giving you guys a little bit of statistics, about 90% to 95% of people that play options lose money. That's a very high amount. Let's say you have an account worth $10,000. Do not put 10 grand into options. Put about 50% of that into regular stocks and maybe 50% in options. Never YOLO all of your gains play options very passively. This is the biggest mistake that a lot of beginners make. I mean, I made the same mistake. I turned like $4,000 to $6,000, 6000 to $7,000. I just keep doing it. And then one bad trade, that $7,000 became like $3,000. It's a really crazy ride. And also a word of advice before we close this video, this is just a quick little introduction about IV, implied volatility, options, buys, calls, little tips, tricks here and there is 
If you can't handle the stock price of the ups and downs of a regular stock, you probably shouldn't play options. Just keep in mind that options trading has destroyed a lot of people's lives. And it's a really emotional roller coaster that it isn't really worth for a lot of people. If you guys don't feel safe playing options, there's no shame in that. I feel like options is almost borderline gambling. If you want to buy some nice shares like ARK, W, or some really good triple leverage ETFs, you could buy those instead of buying options. Remember, if you buy shares, those things never expire. If you buy options, they expire and they become worthless and they become zero dollars. Too many times have I seen seeing a lot of people put 10 grand in options and 10 grand literally become zero dollars in less than a few weeks. It's a really crazy cycle. And by the way, you can see SPY, it's been really flat. It's ups, downs, ups, and downs. When you see a graph like this, calls and puts do not make money because it's way too flat but you check the one year chart you can see this giant drop puts made a lot of money you can see this giant rally calls made a lot of money if you check out this month it's super flat it's ups and downs there's no clear direction calls and puts lose money so that's about it this is like a quick little beginning tutorial and i've been seeing a lot of people open up brand new brokerages and also brand new accounts to play options just a quick little tip i mean don't put all your money in if you guys have 500 dollars put only like half of it in. I mean, you don't wanna lose all your money on one single play. And the best way to learn options, in my opinion, isn't just watching a bunch of YouTube videos, is actually getting down and dirty into this options market. I have a Discord server if you guys wanna check that out. I do post a lot of things on there. We talk about stocks, dividends, there's over 4,000 people. You can message the moderators, people on there are pretty educated on this topic. So yeah, definitely check it out. Thanks for watching.